Welcome to Talking Forest, and this is the Forest Sheffield United match preview. Hello, welcome to the match preview for Forest Sheffield United. Coming up on Friday night, as you see to the side of me, um, got a little graphic around me made. Um, so yeah, feast your eyes on that while listening to me ramble on for a bit. But going to start with the Forest game away at Arsenal. Uh, I think we got peppered in the first half, in my opinion. Um, but it's to be expected you're going to go away to a team that that ran the best team in the world very very close last year, and they're going to do it again this year. They're, they're a hell of a team. It was expected, and last year when we went there, we got we got done five nil. So I think it's an improvement. And then in the second half, when we changed it up, brought on a one year an actual striker. Brought on a langer, give us some pace on the break, and just got men further up the pitch. We, we caused Arsenal problems and, and we scored. And then the last 10 minutes after we, obviously between when we scored and the end of the game, it was all Forest really. We, we, was, we were going for them. But touching on a one year, he has to start on Friday night against Sheffield United. He just has to. Didn't mind starting with Morgan and Jono on the weekend at Arsenal. We weren't going to have much of the ball and we'll try and catch him on the counter. Plus, a one he wasn't 100% fit to start, but just his little cameo he made off the bench. He proven to me he's fit enough, he's strong enough, and, and he's just good enough to, to start. He has to start against Sheffield United. Now, a debating point is, would you swap Alanga for Johnson? Um, I, I, I've seen a lot of teams go around with the 4-2-3-1 the and have Jono right, Alanga left, uh, and then have Danilo and Mangala in the, in the middle with, with Morgan in front of them. But I just don't think it will work, and especially with Cooper wanting to play the five at the back with the wing backs, I think we're going to be set on that formation all year, unless it goes horribly wrong and he has to change it desperately. But I can see Alanga coming in for Johnson and maybe starting up top with Tywa, with Morgan in behind. I'm not too sure, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if Johnson starts. Nia Carte played for the under-21s the other night uh, and uh, it got 60 minutes in his, in his system. Um, so I think he'll be he'll be on the verge of a return. He was on the bench on Saturday. Uh, would not be surprised at all if he's in the squad on Friday night. Touching on Matt Turner now, when it was linked, everyone thought, okay, he's not amazing, but as a backup to Dean Henderson, he'll do. But then the yeah, stories come out over the last few days where it doesn't look like Henderson will be leaving Man U. It looks like we're going to be stuck with Turner as our first goalkeeper all year. And with his performance he put in on Saturday, I don't mind that. He looked good, he looked solid, um, and I think we'll be okay this year. One more talking point about Forrest before we move on to Sheffield United was Serge Aurier looked very, very poor on the weekend. And he's looked poor throughout pre-season. I've watched a couple of, of the games in pre-season and he's not looked amazing. He, he was very, very good last year, very solid, what, just what we needed. But he just, especially in pre-season, looked shocking. And then against Arsenal last week, he was losing the ball. It looks like he gets a nosebleed every time he comes forward. He can't do anything when he gets past the halfway line. And um, it's, it's a shame, really, because he's a really, really good defensive player. So if he had that attacking attacking threat, he'd be a hell of a right-back. But he doesn't. Uh, and we got caught out down his side. He was coming up against Martinelli, who's one of the, one of the best left-wingers in the world. Um, so let's bear that in mind. But he didn't have his best of games. Now, moving on to Sheffield United. They started their Premier League season, just like us, with a loss. But we went to Arsenal and lost 2-1. They lost 1-0 at home to Crystal Palace. Now, I, you've seen in my predictions, I think Sheffield United are going to go down bottom. Smack bottom. A lot of people predicted Luton, but I think they'll catch a few teams out. Sheffield United, Selin and Jai, Selin Burge, they, 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 they were their two best players, let's be real. And the rest of the squad is not anywhere near Premier League level. And they didn't really threaten Crystal Palace whatsoever. It was pretty much a very, very comfortable game for Palace. Uh, maybe a few half chances for Sheffield United, but nothing where you really thought they, they, they were going to get back into the game and get something out of it. So I think it just proves the level that Sheffield United are at. Now, I just mentioned they lost their two best players in NGI and Burge, but they've also brought in Gustavo Hamer, Harmer, however you want to pronounce it. The midfielder from Coventry is a hell of a midfielder for championship level. We're awaiting to see what he's like at the Premier League. I wouldn't have minded him whatsoever at Forest being a backup. I think he'd be a hell of a player to have on the bench for us. But that shows the difference in squad. I think he'll walk straight into their team and he may he would probably just sit on the bench for Forest. He won't get in against Mangala. He wouldn't get in ahead of Danilo. Wouldn't get in ahead of Gibbs White. 
Um, but he is a very, very good player for Sheffield United. And if they are going to miraculously stay up, it will be through him. But like I said, I do think Sheffield United are destined for the drop. Uh, I think they're going to go. They could go quite early as well. I don't think they're going to have much quality. I can't see Heckingbottom lasting the full year. And um, they're just not Premier League level. Now, my predicted lineup for the game is down below. It's only Forest lineup. Um, but I've got Turner. Ori, Worrell, Bolly, Niakate, Aina as a back five. I just think it's going to be the exact same, just Niakate coming in from McKenna if he's fit. I hope he is. He's a hell of a hell of a defender for us. Better than McKenna. He's long for it can be an asset, although Aina has one too. Aina impressed me. I wouldn't mind switching Nico Williams out for Ori. He's more attacking down the right hand side, and we should have a bit more possession against Sheffield United, let's be honest. So we should have more chances, more attacking threat, and Nico Williams gives you that. Midfield three stays the same. Now, I've tried to think in my head, will he go for the how he did last year with Morgan, Jono and Tyro and then only have two midfielders? Can't see it. And if he does, then I believe Yates has to be one of the two in there. Not because I don't think he's better than Danilo or Mangala. It's just the type of game it is. He's going to have to play the scrappy game. He's going to have to sit in midfield and break up play whenever Sheffield United come forward. And he's just going to have to be in there and be a nuisance. Front two, I've got Awanyi and Gibbs-White. I do think he'll drop Johnson. Alanga won't replace him. I just think Tybo up top as the target and Morgan in behind him. This, I think that's just how Cooper's going to set up. But if it was down to me, I'd go the four at the back. Maybe three, maybe a 4-3-3. Three, three. Go four at the back. Midfield three of Yates, Morgan and Danilo. And then a front three of Alanga, Johnson and Tywo. Um, but I'm not in charge. Cooper is. And I think that's the team he's going to go for. And as you can see, right in the bottom corner, my score prediction is 2-0 Forest. I think we'll just have too much for them, too much quality, too much attacking threat, especially with a one-year. And then if that is the, the team to, to play, Morgan and a one-year will cause them problems, Danilo will cause them problems. And then off the bench, we've got Brennan Johnson and Anthony Alanga when their legs get tired. I think it could be a mismatch. Uh, I, I do think Sheffield United will have chances in the game just because of the type of game it is. Um, but I do think Forest will have too much and it'll be 2-0. Let me know in the comments down below what your score prediction is, what team you'd line up with and what you thought of today's video. Drop the video a like and subscribe to join the Talking Forest family.